Hello, my lovely English learners. How are you all? This is Pradhan, and I welcome you on Let's Talk with a very big heart. Today's lesson is very interesting. Every time there are, when we design a lesson, there are themes to different lessons. But I thought, why not create a lesson that actually helps us understand making use of phrases of English language for daily use? This is what today's session is about, ladies and gentlemen. Today we will talk about. Ten most common English expressions you should use from today. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started with the first phrase on the list that we have. The first one is "You wish." "You wish" is also used as an exclamation, and it comes as a as a bit of a feeling. "You wish." It means it implies that something will most likely not happen. For example, you're saying something. and you think that that is not a possibility there are very less chances of it happening that's when you say ah you wish for example you think she'll go on a date with you you wish that means it seems that it is absolutely impossible dude you wish keep on wishing on it it will never happen so that is you wish moving to the next common used expression that you should add from today onwards and that is why so blue When the color of your skin turns blue, does that mean that you're in good health or bad health? Well, I hope you answer the latter one, which is bad. It means asking somebody, "Why so sad? What has happened? Why are you looking so unhealthy, so depressed? What is wrong?" For example, "Dude, why so blue? It's been three months from your breakup. You broke up with your partner about three months ago, but you still look equally sad." Why? Please change it. It's po- possibly reflecting on your personality badly. Let's look at the next phrase in the list for today, and that is "my two cents." Now, this is a very funny phrase that you can use in daily life. How many times does it happen with you that people give unnecessary advices to you, or we end up giving un- unnecessary advices to people too? That's when we use "my two cents." It means to give unnecessary opinion. especially when it is not asked for let's understand it using an example below these days influencers that means social media influencers especially on instagram facebook etc are giving their two cents about how to run social media platforms well nobody is asking them what to do how to do but they are still giving their not asked opinion to everybody that is called two cents my two cents Uh, an opinion or an advice that is not asked moving on to the next phrase which is sleep on it i have seen a lot of people in the business world formal english making use of this phrase and it means to delay a decision making a decision on something until the following day for example if you have to make a decision right now you delay it to the next day why because you want to think about it a little more that is called sleeping on it for example I'm going to sleep on your advice tonight and I'll take the decision tomorrow. Whatever advice you've given to me, I'm not going to take the de- decision on a snap. I'm going to think about it, sleep on it and I will answer it tomorrow. I will take a decision tomorrow. What did you recently sleep on? Do let me know in the comments se- section below. Not literally the idea I mean. Here we go to the next one. Go Dutch. You can use this phrase with your friends. especially when you go out and eat with them it means to share the cost of something especially a meal such as a dinner or a lunch in half for example if the bill is 5000 rupees you give 2500 your friend gives 2500 sometimes the situation gets slightly awkward to avoid that situation you can say especially when it comes to paying bills you can say don't worry I'm not going to pay the entire one. You don't pay the entire one. We will go Dutch. Let's understand using example. You don't have to pay the entire food bill. Let's go Dutch. A good friend here says, "Let's divide the bill in half half." Moving to the next one, call it a day. When you want when you decide to stop doing something, that's when you say, "Let's call it a day." That is called let's call it a day. think we have done enough work today i am feeling tired now let's call it a day 
it feels like I've done enough hard work that I wanted to do for today. Now I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to decide to stop doing it. Let's move to the next one and that is sick and tired. And it means to be annoyed or frustrated with something or someone. It can be either a situation or it can be a person as well, someone. For example, I'm getting sick and tired of you picking on me all the time. I'm getting really annoyed. You keep on teasing me here and now. So please don't do that. I'm getting sick and tired of it. Let's move to the next one. Sleep tight. Sleep tight is a daily English phrase that you can use in daily conversation, which just means to sleep deeply and well. And you can use this phrase when you want to say good night too. So that is sleep tight. For example, sleep tight. Tomorrow is going to be a long day. Sleep comfortably. Tomorrow there's a lot of hard work coming up. Time for us for the next one. Grab a bite means to step out to eat something. A lot of times when you do not have, uh, when, you, when, you, when you have not prepared anything at your home, you intend to go out and you eat outside. That's when you say grab a bite, especially from a restaurant where you do not sit. It's a takeaway restaurant. That's when you say grab a bite and short meal, not a long lavish lunch or dinner. Example is we could grab a bite on our way to home and discuss the plan. Possibly a colleague is saying it to the other one. There's a plan that needs to be discussed. We'll grab a bite, quickly eat food from outside whilst we are going home. This was about all the phrases related to Eng English language daily conversation that you can make use of in daily conversation again. Please take good care of yourself, make use of these and refine your English communication via vocabulary building. Thank you very much again. Take good care and I will see you soon. Do you struggle to speak English clearly? You possibly know all the grammar rules, but still your English doesn't sound fluent. Do you find it hard to pronounce English words with the right stress and accent? You know English well, but still your English doesn't sound that fluent. It has that mother tongue influence, in short MTI, and you hesitate to speak English confidently. Are you afraid that you might pronounce words wrong and cause embarrassment to yourself? If you want to improve your communication skills and speak English with correct pronunciation and accent, I have a wonderful accent and pronunciation self-training program for you. This is the most simplified and comprehensive English pronunciation program ever created. I'm Radhan, a Cambridge University certified linguist with over 10 years of experience teaching people to speak immaculate English. Join me on this journey to improve your English communication skills faster and better.